You know, right after I uploaded my good dinosaur review, I actually got a comment on my YouTube channel on that video asking me if I was able to review Alexander and the Terrible, Horrible, No Good, Very Bad Day. Okay. Alexander and the Terrible, Horrible, No Good, Very Bad Day. Wow, that's a long name for a Disney movie. Try saying that five times fast. I bet you won't be able to. But it's a Disney movie and it was released in 2014 starring Steve Carell. And it's about a 12-year-old boy named Alexander, or Alex, and he is down on his luck at the moment. He is constantly having bad days, things are never going his way, and he's just surrounded by many, many optimists. The rest of his family are just having the time of their lives, their absolute high points, and this kid is at this absolute low point. So he kind of feels like an outcast because nothing is going his way. On the night before his 12th birthday, he decides to make a wish on the candle saying that he wished that his family would understand on what it would be like to have such a terrible day since they are such optimists. And so the very next day, well, his wish came true, and so everything goes nuts. Now to be fully honest, one of the reasons why I am reviewing this movie is just the fact that somebody requested it, but I didn't feel pressured to do it because, well, it's a movie that I kind of don't mind talking about. In fact, I almost find it kind of annoying that no one talks about this movie. I would have said that it's an unread movie, like it gets a lot of hate or something, but I can't say that because I don't know how much the rest of the world thinks about it. Because Chris Stockman hasn't done a video on it, Jeremy Johns hasn't done a video on it, The Flick Pick hasn't done a video on it, like, I, no one is talking about this movie. And so, why not speak up about it? I did watch this movie with my family way back since it was first released, and I've been watching it from time to time, and I just watched it again literally just a few minutes ago, like I watched it and immediately set up the camera to do the review. However, while I always just looked at it as mindless entertainment, this time I was interested in looking at it critically and looking for flaws, and there are a couple, but overall I will say that this is a rather solid film, because the point of this movie is just to be a comedy, and the point of this movie is really just to do one thing make you laugh. And I think the movie succeeds, for the most part. One thing I really do love doing is that the first 20 minutes of the movie really does a great job. It sets the characters and the location and the whole situation. Like, we actually get a little snippage, like we get a glimpse at what every family member is going through to set up what they have to do in the next day. So the first 20 minutes sets up, okay, what does the father have to do on the day? What does the mother have to do on the next day? What does Alex have to do on the next day? What does the sister, what does the brother have to do on the next day? And so on. And so since we all get what these characters are trying to do, like every individual character have their own individual goals. And the movie tries to explain all these goals at the same time, and all these characters are trying to achieve these at the same time. Sometimes they separate, sometimes they're in groups together, that sort of thing throughout the entire movie. Now, admittedly, it sounds like that would get a bit confusing, but it's actually really easy to understand, and it's also a very fast-paced movie. This movie moves really quickly. You might complain that some movies may move a bit slowly in the beginning, or suffer the second act sag, or something like that. But this movie doesn't. This movie is very fast. It moves very quickly. Too quickly, in fact, and that is one of my overall flaws with the movie. In fact, one of my main complaints of the movie is that the movie moves so fast, the first act is really fast, the second act is really fast, the third act is really fast, and since all three acts are so fast, like the movie is moving extremely quickly, it means the overall movie is actually really, really short. The movie's only an hour and 20 minutes long, including end credits. The average family movie is about an hour and a half, and other movies like action movies can go on to two to three to sometimes even four hours long. This movie's just an hour and 20 minutes, which is actually really short. Also, another problem I do have with this movie is that since there's so much chaos going on throughout the movie, like it's going from non-stop chaos and humor. Like it tries to be funny and has all this chaos going on to the next thing that has chaos and tries to be funny to the next thing that has chaos and is trying to be funny and just keeps going on and on and on. And while, yeah, it can be funny sometimes, the movie never actually takes a breather to have us remember that these are characters. 
Now, I do say that I do like movies with fast pace. I don't like movies that slow down and are dragged, but I feel like the movie moves a bit too fast. When everything's going all crazy and all chaotic, with all so much chaos going on in this movie, I feel like that in between every three or four scenes or so, I feel like there should be a scene that just allows you to take a breather and go, <sighs> these are characters. And these characters have motivations and goals and dimensions. Have the scene about two minutes long or so, and then move on to the next chaotic scene. That would have flashed the movie out, and it would have been able to allow the movie to go for a bit longer, because like I said, the movie's too short. But the story is entertaining, and it's fun. Like, it's just an entertaining story. If you want to have a good comedy just to make you laugh, this movie is a good movie, because, yeah, there are chances that there are going to be quite a few things that will make you laugh. This movie is a comedy. I just feel like the movie could slow down at a couple of points to make it even more better. So we could take a breather, then when the chaos starts back up again, it allows us to keep laughing. But since the chaos scene goes after chaos scene, after chaos scene, after chaos scene, after chaos scene, it just jumps right into the next one, to the next one, to the next one, without giving us enough time to be able to take a breather and recover from the last one. Guys, I know you're a comedy, but it's alright to have this thing called character development. Not to say that this movie doesn't have character development, but I just feel like it would be nice if the movie took a breather, because the movie is non-stop comedy. Apart from that, we do also have the characters, like the character Alexander, who is our main protagonist, and what do you know? This character loves Australia, which happens to be the very country I'm in. There is one tiny issue I do have with the cast, and that's Steve Carell's character as the father. Now, one of the best compliments of an actor is that if he is so absorbed into his role that you don't see an actor but you see a character. And I'm sorry, but when I watch this movie, I don't see a father. I just see Steve Carell trying to play as a father. And the fact that Steve Carell's in this movie is just really distracting. But I don't really think that's too much of a problem, considering the Mission Impossible movies. I love all of those movies. But I don't see a character like Ethan Hunt, I see Tom Cruise, and yet I don't let it bother me. But if you don't like celebrities distracting you, then yes, yeah, Steve Carell in this movie is going to be distracting. The overall acting can sometimes be off-putting, and I definitely have a lot of times where I'm watching this movie and I think, they're acting right now. And that's not a really good sign. Another thing that bothered me is that this isn't Steve Carell himself, but this is just the writing of his character. But there's a scene in this movie where he finds out that his little baby has just ingested chalk or whatever it is, and yet he doesn't decide to, well, I don't know, take him to the hospital. Now, I get there's so much stuff going on, like there's a woman who's about to lose her job, and this guy needs to be able to get to his job interviews. Alexander's got school, one of the characters got suspended, one character wants to do Peter Pan and all this stuff. And this is all crazy stuff. But if a family man had just ingested something that could possibly be life-threatening, I think one of the most sane things you would do is just ignore all that stuff and just get that kid to the hospital ASAP. Seriously, if you had a baby and he or she ingested something that could possibly be considered as toxic, would you just ignore it and you would go, uh, it might not be poisonous and just leave it? No, you would take that kid to the hospital. One thing I do like about this movie though is that while it is a comedy and while it doesn't give you a lot of time to sort of allow you to take the breather to remember that these are characters, I do like how the movie gets somewhat deep and it actually does try to take a look at this balance of being needing to be optimistic about a really low attitude or being too optimistic and trying to accept that there needs to be a balance because I'm an optimistic person but there's like this sort of conflict like there needs to be balance. You need to be somewhat optimistic but you can't be too optimistic. If the movie explored that a bit more because this is actually really glossed over but if you actually explored that even more I feel like the movie could have had a good emotional impact along with being a great comedy which would have made the movie even better. Now, I don't want to sound like I'm bashing this movie, I don't want to sound like a hater or anything. What I want to do is that when I watch movies, I want to see things improve. If I like a movie and I see problems with it, I will establish those problems because I want to see this already good movie be improved. So don't look at these negatives as criticisms, but more as ways how I think the movie could be improved, so this movie could be 
better. Ultimately, while it does have quite a few flaws, I still think it is a rather entertaining movie. If you want to watch a good Steve Carell movie that's lighthearted and fun, and you just want to laugh at a few things, then check this movie out. It's a funny movie. There are just a couple things about it that you should know. But yeah, I honestly do recommend this movie. It's cheesy, it's fun, and it's got really obvious acting, and it's really, really fast and really short. But if you honestly don't mind pacing issues, and you don't mind acting issues, and you don't mind any of that stuff, then you're going to think this movie is great. This will be a very fun movie for you. It's a rather entertaining movie. If you want a good, light-hearted, fun entertainment for an hour and 20 minutes, then give this movie a watch. It's a good movie. So that's my thoughts on this incredibly long-named movie. Stay tuned, guys, because coming up soon will be my review for Sonic 06. I am going to play some of the levels and re-look at the story and everything so I can review it for you guys. I... <laughs> I'm looking forward to reviewing this game because this game, it's iconic, let's just say. This game's iconic. And I look forward to bringing my review of this game to you. But until then, hasta la vista, baby.